Good morning, most amazing kids in the world. I love you. Are you learning how to be courageous? Meemaw Jane, Aunt Jane, wants to be courageous when things are hard. And I ask God for strength. Well, what do you think is going to happen to Joseph? He just interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And he not only interpreted the dream, he told him what he believed God had told him on how to solve the problem. So not only are we going to be courageous, but we're going to be creative. We're going to have creative solutions to the world's problems because we can listen to God. We can hear God and discover how to solve problems. And you can do this now. You don't have to be an adult. You have get have problems sometimes even when you're playing with other kids. A problem comes up and you can ask God and he will show you how to have a creative solution to the problem, won't he? So what do you think Pharaoh's going to want to do? Any ideas? Hey, he knows that Joseph has heard from God. So this is what happens. Listen. Go to Genesis 41, 37 and read it with me. Remember, when you read it for yourself... It helps you to learn it and understand it even better. So get your Bibles and turn to Genesis 41, verse 37. Joseph's suggestions were well received by Pharaoh and his officials. So Pharaoh asked his officials, Can we find anyone else like this man, so obviously filled with the Spirit of God? No, there was no one else like Joseph in his kingdom, was there? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court, and all my people will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a rank higher than yours. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh! So Joseph is going from being a slave from being wrongly accused and being a prisoner for all those years. And now Pharaoh is making him the second most important person in the entire kingdom. Pharaoh is the only person higher than Joseph. Isn't that so awesome that God had such good plans for Joseph? And you're going to see, besides saving the people of Egypt... There's an even more important mission, mission because of the famine on who else he's going to save. So verse 41, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand. That signet ring was very important. Pharaoh would actually stamp into wax orders that showed it was like a signature that everyone knew that that was pharaoh's signet ring and what those orders said were going to be carried out by pharaoh so pharaoh is giving joseph authority he's giving him power and he's giving him authority look what else he gives him he placed it on joseph's finger he dressed him in fine linen clothing Remember, he had been a slave and a prisoner all these years, so I'm sure his clothing was not very nice, especially in prison. And he hung a gold chain around his neck. You know, that's symbolizing prosperity, wealth, favor. Then he had Joseph ride in the chariot reserved for his second in command. So he had a special chariot with special horses to, to carry him around. And wherever Joseph went, the command was shouted, kneel down. So the people were required to honor Joseph as being a very important person in the kingdom. So Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all Egypt. And Pharaoh said to him, I am Pharaoh, but no one will lift a hand or a foot in the entire land of Egypt without your approval. Wow. That is crazy, isn't it? It just shows you that sometimes you have to wait a long time and you may even be mistreated or misunderstood. But when God tells you something or gives you a dream in your heart that you're supposed to do, even if you don't really understand it, 
if you will just continue to lean on Jesus and trust in God no matter what, you will make it through and you will uh, see God's will done in your life. And this was a very important thing to happen. And you know, sometimes it's about timing. The right time and place was at this exact time. Then in verse 45, Pharaoh gave Joseph a new Egyptian name, Sathana Pania. He also gave him a wife whose name was Asenath. She was the daughter of Pot Potiphera, Potiphera, I guess, the priest of On. So uh, Joseph took charge of the entire land of Egypt. He was 30 years old. Now remember, he was 17 when he had the dream. And now he's 30 years old. So that was a very, very long time. How many years difference is that? 13 years, right? 13 and 17 equals 30. So he was a slave for 13 years. So he was 30 years old when he began serving the court of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And when Joseph left Pharaoh's presence, he inspected the entire land of Egypt. He immediately went to work. We know that Joseph is going to do a very good job of taking care of the crops and preparing them for the famine. As predicted, for seven years the land produced bumper crops. During those years, Joseph gathered all the crops grown in Egypt and stored the grain from the surrounding fields in the cities. He piled up huge amounts of grain like sand on the seashore. Finally, he stopped keeping records because there was too much to measure. And during this time, before the first of the famine years, two sons were born to Joseph and his wife, Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. Joseph named his older son Manasseh, for he said, God has made me forget all my troubles and everyone in my father's family. Joseph named his second son Ephraim. For he said, God has made me fruitful in this land of my grief. So even when things are tough and you're going through hard things, God can still make you fruitful and you can still prosper. At last, the seven years of bumper crops throughout the land of Egypt came to an end. Then the seven years of famine began just as Joseph had predicted. The famine also struck all the surrounding countries, but throughout Egypt there was plenty of food. Eventually, however, the famine spread throughout the land of Egypt as well. And when the people cried out to Pharaoh for food, he told them, Go to Joseph and do whatever he tells you. So with severe famine everywhere, Joseph opened up the storehouses and distributed grain to the Egyptians, for the famine was severe throughout the land of Egypt. He had saved up grain through all of the good seasons so he would have it for this time of drought and famine. And people from all around came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph because the famine was severe throughout the world. And tomorrow, we're going to see if Joseph's family was affected by the famine or not. Okay, guys, I love you. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I hope that you're creative problem solvers today. In Jesus' name, bye. I love you.